chapter 10, verses 23 and 24. I'll tell you what let's do. If you would, let's just back up to 21. Uh, didn't really have that wrote down, but I got to look, just glanced at it there. We'll start at 21 down through 24. The Bible says, Having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Listen to what verse 23 says. Let us hold fast. In other words, let us hold firm the profession of our faith without wavering. I like this. For he is faithful that promised. Yes. Right. Amen. 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 Verse 24. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Let's stop there. Father, we come before you tonight. God, we thank you for each one that's here this evening and Father, we thank you, Lord, just to God for your presence that we know is with us here this evening. And Father, we just thank you, God, for your love that so passes, surpasses all of our understanding. And God, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy that helps us uh, in our times of need. Father, we ask you tonight, God, to look upon every heart here this evening and know the needs. God, let this word go forth. And God, Lord, we just pray that, God, you anoint this vessel that God that you have that you have called. And Lord, let Mark get back out of the way. And we just pray that tonight, God, give us ears to hear and a mind to understand and a heart to receive what you have for us tonight. We love you and give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said amen. amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you just a few minutes, if I could, tonight about the need of the Christian perseverance. Amen. You don't have to acknowledge this question and, and answer this by this, but just a kind of a little pro, uh, thought provoking. Most of us, if not all of us, is glad 2020 is gone. Amen. 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 That's an understatement if there ever was one. But most of us have probably said, I'm glad 2021 is here. But let me pull back just a little bit. How many of us when 2019 left and 2020 come in said, boy, I'm glad 2019's gone. 2020, got to be a better year. Amen? My idea, my thought there for that is what is going to hold 2021? What's 2021 going to hold for us? Now we hope for better Certainly we hope that, my God, don't let no more plagues and all that stuff come in. But we don't know what 2021 is going to hold. Amen. We can pray as hard as we want to, and, and I believe that we need to do that, and we need to pray for God to intervene in our country and in our families and all of that. And thank God that we got a God that is greater than anybody else, than any president or governor or anybody else. He's a God that knows all things. But who's to say that 2021 may be a little bit rough too? Oh, so my thing is tonight, are we committed, as I was talking about a few minutes ago, are we committed to serving God no matter what comes our way? Are we willing to persevere during these times? Amen. Amen. We look at verse 23 there that I read. He said that, uh, and, uh, let me find my spot here. He said, let us hold fast or firmly the profession of our faith without wavering. Don't be like those waves. Don't be like those uh, boats and things that are just tossed about with every wind of doctrine. But we need to know that who we believe in and that He is able to keep that that we have committed into His hands. We could see in the previous scriptures what a promise that God has given to us and immeasurable blessings uh, uh, in the privileges that Jesus has secured for you and me. Verse 17 said that their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. What a promise. Thank God. People may bring your things up to you that you used to do. I got a friend one time. Uh, he's gone on to be with the Lord. Now we get together. The first thing he did, Mark, you remember this. But you know what? God don't remember, does he? 
When he washes us clean, I'm glad tonight that he don't know what Mark used to be. He don't remember what it used to be, but thank God he only wants what we are now and where we're headed. He, he don't remember them anymore. Verse 19 said, I have the first four brethren boldness to enter into the presence of God through the blood of Jesus. Amen. What a promise. Yeah. Amen. Whatever 2021 holds, there's two things I know of. My sins have been forgiven, and I have the power through the blood of Jesus Christ that whatever plague, whatever disease, whatever affliction, whatever disappointment, whatever thing ever comes my way, thank God tonight that I serve a God. I don't have to walk this walk alone. I don't have to live, amen, defeated. You know what? Thank God. I have the blood of Jesus. And when I got that, we have access to the greatest power known to mankind. Are we going to persevere? I hope so. I hope we're committed. I hope we're ready to say, oh Lord, I don't know what this year holds, but I know who holds it. And ain't nothing can come my way that God that you don't allow. Verse 23, but we read there, hold fast the profession of our faith. Amen. The writer of Hebrews has a theme in this chapter as well as in chapter 11, and that is the perseverance in the faith. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. The duty is ours. The Bible says every man has been dealt a measure of faith. But it's up to you to hold that faith. Come on now. It's up to you. Hold fast to it. Hold fast to it. You may not understand what's going to happen. You may not understand why things are the way they are. You may not understand. You may be disappointed. You may be in the valleys of, uh, of disappointment and hurts and things. But you know what? I know one thing. I'm going to hold to that faith that God's put into my hand, put into my soul. I'm going to hold fast to that profession. Hallelujah. It's our duty. God's given it to you. Now guard it. Hold it. Believe it. Believe what God. You see, you can have a promise of God, but you might not understand what that promise exactly means. All you got to do is hold on to it. Because His Word. Amen. Will forever settle in heaven and in earth. There's one thing I found out in 37 years of serving him. Brother, he can't lie. Hallelujah. Yeah. Man will lie to you. But God can't lie. Yeah. He don't know what it is. And if he says it, you might as well hang on to it. Because God will bring it to pass. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's right. What do we mean when we say the profession of faith? Basically, it just means that when we have received Christ in our hearts, that we are prepared. As Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24, 25, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Amen. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. Amen. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. That's the faith. That's the profession. See, when you got saved, you picked up a cross. Oh, come on now. Come on. Jesus carried the ultimate cross. But when you and I got saved, he said he must take up his cross, pick, deny himself, and follow me. Whatever your cross is, are you willing and committed to carry that cross all the way, that spiritual cross I'm talking about? Are you willing to press on? Are you willing to go through whatever? How we need perseverance in our lives today. Hallelujah. Hold fast to our faith. It means to continue in and to press forward along the path that we professed that we have entered. God warns us that after we have escaped the pollutions of this world 
through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we again are entangled by the deceptive tricks of the devil or caught up into the trials of temptation in this world. The Bible says the latter end of that person is worse than before. Right. Amen. Don't believe me? I'll give you a scripture. How's that? 2 Peter 2 and 20 21. For after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Let me tell you, it's one thing to make a confession of faith, to admit that you got saved, but it's quite another to hold on to that profession. There's a lot of people that I've knelt at an altar with and I've prayed through with them. They've given their heart and soul to the Lord and they have made a confession, but they get up and how many of them go out the doors? You you never see them again. You never hear them about them coming into the house of God again. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? It's one thing to make a confession. It's another to hold to that confession. Amen. Good preaching. Very good. You see, 37 years ago, I not only made a confession, 37 years later, I'm holding on to it. Come on, church. Give him a hand if you're holding on to it tonight. I'm beginning to feel something. Oh, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. I'm telling you, the kids can mess up, but you're still going to hold on to that profession. People will lie to you that you thought a whole lot of, but you're still going to hold on to it. Hallelujah. Because the one that cannot lie cannot let me fail. Oh, does anybody hear me tonight? I'm here to tell you, let's hold on to that profession. See, it's easy for me to profess Christ. Quite another for me to live a life that is proving that that I'm holding on to it. Amen. Good. It's one thing. Anybody, I mean, I talk to people. Well, I'm a Christian. Oh, I'm a Christian. And they use all kinds of dirty language and yeah. drink all kinds of other stuff and do all these things and run around. Now, let me tell you, I don't believe that's much of a profession. Amen. 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 But I believe when a man or a woman gets saved, there's, there's a change. Amen. It'll be so deep in their hearts. Amen. That it'll even work on the outside. It'll make you think differently. It'll make you talk differently. It'll make you walk differently. It'll make you do things. It'll make you love them that persecute you and say all manner of evil against you. It'll make you love them and pray for your enemies. That's the kind I'm talking about. Amen. I'm telling the love of God is so great. It'll sure to be so great in our lives. Amen. That it'll make us even want to love our enemies. That preacher a term in it, wouldn't it? Some of us got just enough of love of God just to get by. Don't make me say it. All right. They got just enough of love of God to make them let them come to church every now and then. Oh, uh oh. They got just enough of love of God to make them miserable. Oh, I'm here to take you. The love of God will make you love your enemies. He's full of love. And didn't he love his enemies? Amen. Amen. When he hung on the cross some 2,000 years ago, amen, he looked down over the crowd. But you know something, brother? I believe he was looking 2,000 years down in the backyard of a fellow, amen, hallelujah, and said, that's my enemy, but I love him so much. I'm going to bring him back. I'm going to make him, hallelujah, and I'm going to touch him. I'm going to make a preacher. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you we need to persevere in this thing. Believe it. Hold fast, he said. Sometimes it's difficult, isn't it? It's hard sometimes to hold on. 
when things happen and they go against you. Very difficult. It's opposition. And what we profess, I've said this, whatever your faith, whatever your faith is, whatever you profess, and I'm talking about your Christian belief, the enemy hears it and he's going to attack it. Amen. 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 You talk about the love of God that's in you, the enemy hears that. He gonna, I guarantee you he'll bring somebody your way that's going to test your love for that person. Amen. I'm here to tell you, I've had a hard time praying for people. And you know what? People that tried to hurt me and destroy me. And I've gotten down. And I can't even get, get, get I can't get beyond their face. God said, you want to pray for them first. Oh, I tell you what, I've got to pray for them, Brother Art, before I pray for anybody else. I'm here to tell you. I'm telling you the enemy will attack your faith in the areas that you brag about how much of faith you got. But you know what? Persevere. If it's love, your enemies persevere. Pray for God to give you what I'm here to tell you. Persevere in this thing. Yes. Amen. Amen. To hold fast means that as Christians we have to put forth our greatest strength and endeavors into the defense of the enemy trying to steal what God's given us. Amen. Hold fast. Yes. Amen. Hold fast to it. Because the enemy wants to steal it. He wants to steal peace. He wants to steal joy. He wants to steal the love and the joy and everything that God has. But you have to hold fast to it. I'm not going to tell you when you hold fast that you won't have hurtful times. That you won't have days that, man, you just wish you'd be glad that day's gone. Most of us are glad 2020 when 2020's gone. Amen. Oh, I remember when the year come in, Brother Gil. We was all excited about it, wasn't we? 2020, man, that's perfect vision, ain't it? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Woo, my goodness. Yeah. Let me preach out just a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting to feel this now. Yeah. Oh, 2020, that means perfect vision. It's going to be a golden year. Oh, thank God, it's gone now. Amen. But you know what? We persevered, didn't we? But you know what? And I'm not trying to bring a damper. But you know what? We need to persevere whether it's 2020 or 2021. Amen. We need... To put forth her greatest strength to hold on to what God's given us. In other words, you got to fight that good fight of faith. Yep. Amen. You see, if you look for reasons to quit, I'm sure you'll find one. Hold on long enough. Amen. But my thought is, let's find a reason to go on. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. That's, I mean, it can be the darkest times, but let's keep on, keep it on. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 8, very familiar scripture. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Amen. He's looking for that one, that, that weakling, that one that strayed. That one that's kind of got off by itself. If you watch them nature programs, and I watch a few of them, and what are those lions or those uh, hyenas and all of them? How, what do they attack? They don't attack the herd. Come on. They attack that weakling, yep. that one that's lagging behind, yep. that one that's some way or another has, for some reason, has just kind of just got enough separation between them and that herd. Think about that. Uh, just enough. Come on. See that? Oh. That enemy, he don't need a lot of room. That, that hyena, that lion, that jaguar don't need a lot of room. Just, just a brief moment. Yeah. That's all it takes. Just a moment. And buddy, he's got it and he's gone. With it. Before the herd can do anything about it. We need to persevere, church. Oh, don't lag behind. Oh, don't, don't get us by yourself. He was oh, I can make it all by myself. I don't know about that. Amen. Come on. Didn't 
created us that way. He didn't. He created us to have fellowship with one another. Yes. To be able to trust in one another for whatever we face and go through. We read in Acts 14, verses 21 and 22. Listen to what the writer says here. And when they, talking about Paul and Barnabas, when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch. Listen to verse 22, what it said. Confirming the souls of Christ and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we through much of tribulation enter the kingdom of God. Amen. Exhorted them to keep the faith. Yes. Continue, continue, persevere, keep on doing, keep on believing, keep on doing it. Amen. It may not be working out the way I want to, but keep on, keep on Amen. believing, Amen. continue in that faith. Amen. If this one drops off, continue on because I can tell you I've been at this a long time and not everybody that starts the race with you will finish it with you. Amen. Oh come on church. Come on. Amen. I, I said everybody that third starts this thing with you or maybe gets in it with you somewhere down the road doesn't mean they will finish it with you. But you know what? Stay with it. Just keep on keeping on. Keep on continuing in the faith that God has given you because nothing that we face God will not give us the faith to overcome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Barnabas had returned to Lystra that they might encourage the believers who were there. They was telling them, you must stand and know that there is no danger like the one of losing your place with Christ. That's right. Huh? There's no advantage like that of keeping their hold onto the faith. The greatest danger that we have is not COVID-19. The greatest danger that you and I have today is not what's in the White House and what will come into the White House. The greatest danger that you and I have tonight is not what's in the governor's house. Amen. It's not in what's outside here. The greatest danger we have is losing what God's given to us. Amen. Let no man take that that God has given to us. Amen. 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 And Paul and Barnabas was telling them, stand Stand. Persevere. Whatever trials you face, get the strength from Christ. Yes. Thank God for brothers and sisters in the Lord that we can go to and we can <coughs> join hands or whatever and we can join our prayers together. Thank God for that, Brother Gill. Man, we've had to call, Jack and I have before. Oh, pray for us or our situations and things. Pray for our family. Pray for this. Thank God for all of that. But you know where I'm going to get my majority of my strength? Is I want to have a close enough relationship with my Lord that the power that he has is going to come into Mark Tolson. Amen. And you know what? If he's going to touch me, I've got me within touching distance. Huh? Amen. See, so I can't touch you right now. Amen. I'm not within touching distance. I still can't touch you. I moved a little closer. But now I'm within touching distance. Goodness. I'm here to tell you tonight we want the Lord, but we don't want to be in touching distance. We need to be where He can touch us. We need to be in the presence where He can touch us or we can touch Him. That little woman with the issue of blood. Hallelujah. She was at home, but one day heard about a man who come walking down the dusty road and said, if I could just touch him. Touch the hem of his garment. 
I don't have to touch him, but I can touch his garment. And the Bible said she pressed her way through the crowd. She persevered in her relationship and in her desire Amen. to get with him. Yeah. But she had to get to where he was. She had to get to where she could touch him. Do, do you hear me tonight? Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. We got too many Christians that's lagging behind too far that they can't touch him. Oh, God, help me tonight to not lag behind, but God, help me that I can get close enough that I can touch you. Hallelujah. We get the strength to pass through them. I'm going to flip over here real quickly to some scripture. If you want to turn there, give me five minutes and I'll shut her down. Amen. Five minutes of peace while I'm at the on you. Just joking. But in Ephesians chapter 3, I want you to look at this. Ephesians chapter 3, starting at verse 13. Listen to what Paul said. Paul is praying for the Ephesians because he sees the need. And I believe this prayer would be fit for us today. Do you know when I get down to pray and I pray for you folks, this is where I go to. This is where I'm going to. Because I'm telling you what, Paul is preach, uh, praying a powerful prayer. Starting at verse 13. Look at it. Ephesians 3, 13. Wherefore I desire that you, be not, uh, that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and in earth is named. Starting at verse 16, he begins to pray this prayer, this thing. That he, God, would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Yes. What a powerful prayer. Yes. And we've got a little bit another verse or two to go. And Paul said, I pray that God, that he, God, would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Amen. To be to strengthen you with might by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Oh my. God give us a heart of faith. That ye be rooted and grounded in love. You know what keeps us persevering? You know what got you through 2020? Through all everything that's went on? It's the love that has grounded you and rooted you in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Love, but he will conquer a lot of mountains. You know that? Amen. Love will conquer your fears. You may not understand a lot of things. I may not understand a lot of things. But if you've got love, but you've got one of the most powerful weapons known to mankind. Amen. Amen. Look at what he said. Being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ that passeth understanding, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Oh, God, help us to know. Help us, our minds, God, to be broadened with the love, with the understanding of God, just how much you love us. Just how much, God, just the breath and the depth and the things of the greatness of it. And to know this love. Now to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. In other words, you can't have a thought that God can't meet. You can't have a need that God can't supply. Amen. Because he's able to do exceedingly above all that we, above all, not just what we ask and think, but above what we ask and think. Amen. He can do more than we can even ask him. Amen. Above it. Yeah. 
I don't know about you, but I've prayed certain prayers. And, and I tell you what, I thought I was praying a pretty big prayer. You know, needing this or needing that or whatever. God blessed me more than I prayed for. Amen. Have you ever had God to do that for you? Thank God tonight. He don't always answer my prayers the way I think he ought to. Sometimes I pray too small. Oh, come on, church. Sometimes uh, we ain't got a little bitty God. He ain't about that tall. But you know what? It don't matter where we go. He's right there. One writer said, if I go to the heavens, you're up there. If I make my bed in hell, you're right there. In other words, God is everywhere. He, even Jonah couldn't get away from him when he was swallowed by that big old fish. God spoke to him in the belly of that whale. Woo! God, Ooh. I got a sermon thought. I ain't gonna tell you what it is, brother. Larry, take it from me. You preach it. I know it will. Amen. No, I'm just teasing. I'm here to tell you, folks. I'm here to tell you. When the word of God comes, I'm here to tell you, we ought to take hold of it. Amen. Does anybody, we ought to persevere in this thing. Did God say, Brother Larry even spoke about it and exhorted on. He said, I'll never leave you. Did he hang with us in 2020? Oh, my goodness. It's gone, thank God. But oh, I don't know what this year holds. But you know what? I know the one that holds it. And I know the one that's going to walk with me. I know the one, amen, that's going to carry me through. I know the one that will never forsake me. I told you five minutes, didn't I? Time's up. But... Folks, if you never hear anything else what I say in this sermon, we do pray that it's a good year in all honesty. We pray it's a whole lot better than the other. Absolutely, we do. But we don't have no guarantees, do we? We don't have no guarantees what tomorrow's going to hold, what next week's going to hold, next month, whatever. But you know what? Whatever it is, he said, I'll keep it. Yes. What you've put into my hands. That's right. I'll keep it. I've had to commit a lot of things to him. I've had to commit my son to him. But you know what? Mark ain't saved yet. But my goodness. What is it, honey? Four years, five years, whatever it's been. Four years. Four years that he's been off of that junk. Amen. I give God the glory. Amen. I have some things that I've had to do for that young and I wouldn't embarrass him and I ain't going to go into details. I've had to do for that young and but oh, I've laid in his truck and I've cried, God touch him. Yes. God save him. I went down there one day to do something. I'm not going to tell you what it was, but I was in there and I thought, oh God, he's lucky to be alive. Yes. I lay across that seat and I said, God save him. Yes. You stinking lying devil. And I'll tell you what, he got him off of it. But I'm going to tell you what, one of these days, he's going to come to me and say, Daddy, I give my life to the Lord. I'll tell you what, you talking about a preacher. I mean, you ain't never seen a preacher like this move. Amen. I'm here to tell you, we're going to persevere. Are you tonight? We just came all over the building.